Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to discuss the top five mistakes to avoid when starting a microgreens business. A lot of this advice here applies to farms that are already up and running as well. It took me many, many years to learn these lessons, and I hope you guys can use this advice to get off the ground running and supercharge your growth for many years to come. So let's get right into it. For those that are new here, my name is Jonah and I started Living Earth Farm, one of Canada's largest microgreens farms, but it didn't start as one of Canada's largest microgreens farms. It started in a small spare bedroom, my parents' house, growing a couple trays. And then eventually over a 10 year period of trial and error, I grew it to become one of Canada's largest microgreens farms. So in that period of time, I grew over a quarter million trays of microgreens and grew literally billions of microgreens seeds, which is crazy. And now I'm focusing my energy and time to help others achieve my level of success and well beyond with less time and effort and avoid the costly mistakes that I made when I started farming 10 years ago. So these are the five mistakes to avoid when starting a microgreens farm. The first mistake to avoid is not expecting perfection from day one, week one, or even year one. I was a perfectionist when I started growing microgreens. I wanted the perfect crops, the perfect growing system, the perfect sales method, the most efficient lean farm possible. That was my goal. And while this was great and allowed me to become a better farmer and better business person, it really slowed down my growth as I spent the majority of my time on production system design instead of finding a good balance between production and sales. And something that took me a while to learn is that running a business is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It took me 10 years to become one of Canada's largest microgreens farms. It didn't happen overnight and there was plenty of times I had to change my business model to make it actually viable. Uh, and it's important to focus on moving towards a model that actually works for you guys and the lifestyle you want to build as an entrepreneur and a farmer. And I can't emphasize this enough, uh, how important creating a sustainable system is for you, not just financially, but from a time enjoyment perspective as well. The number one reason I see farms fail is not because of profitability. Microgreens are the most profitable legal crop in the entire world. It's from burnout. So creating a sustainable system for you is critical for long-term success in running any business, but especially a microgreens business. And remember, if you're just starting out, don't expect to be an expert tomorrow. It takes time to learn a new skill set, and running a microgreens business is, for a lot of you guys, a new skill set. The second mistake to avoid when starting a microgreens business is growing and selling too many varieties. So there are hundreds of varieties of microgreens, but there are only about 20 or 30 that really make sense to grow commercially. And then within those, there's only about 10 that are actually quite profitable. So as a beginner, rather than growing everything under the sun, you want to focus on the crops that are the most profitable. The higher your profits are in the beginning, the faster you can expand your business. For example, if I can grow a tray of pea shoots in one week and make $40 revenue off that one tray, or I can grow red vein sorrel in four weeks and make $50 off that same tray. In one year of doing this, I'll make $2,000 growing pea shoots and only $600 growing red vein sorrel. And if you're growing 20 trays on a rack each week, which is a pretty common starting point for migraines businesses, then you'll make $40,000 with pea shoots in that year versus $7,200 with red vein sorrel. So as you can see, crop selection is really important. So I'd recommend starting out with crops like pea shoots, kale, radish, and broccoli. We have all the details on supplies you need and how to grow microgreens easily in our growing guide that is available at microgreensconsulting.com completely for free. The third mistake to avoid when starting a microgreens business is to avoid the fear of failure. This is a really big one. I had to deal with this big time when I started my farm. I really wanted to grow food for a living and feed people the most nutritious food I could possibly grow. When I struggled to get sales in the early years or when I couldn't solve a growing issue, I constantly thought to myself that maybe I should just give up. Maybe I should go get a normal nine to five job to avoid these challenges and just live a simpler life. And this is totally normal. This is a normal thing for people to go through. A business is not always the easiest thing to start up and run. The difference I see between those who can run a business in the long run and those who can't is the acceptance that failure is completely normal. Is it scary? Yes, failing is definitely scary. At first, it sucks to fail. But each failure is a learning opportunity that if you learn to utilize this energy, you can transform it to make your business better, more profitable, and easier to run. The fear of failure stops a lot of people from starting a business. 
the way I look at it is if you really want to change your life and do something you truly love on a daily basis and find immense satisfaction knowing that you are positively contributing to make the world a better place, then you can find the inner strength to take the leap of faith and try uh, running a business or starting a micro business, whatever it may be. And it doesn't need to be a big jump. You don't need to quit your job, sell your house, go live in like countryside and start a homestead to start a microgreens business. All you need is a few hundred dollars of materials and some spare time to test it out. It's literally one of the least expensive businesses there is to start out and one of the fastest to become profitable. Number four is trying to figure out everything on your own. There is absolutely no need to reinvent the wheel with microgreens. You can 100% spend the time and do the research with YouTube videos like this one and the thousands of hours of microgreens content there is on the internet. The information is out there. But figuring out what is good advice and not so good advice is a lot harder without the experience of actually running a microgreens business. And this is why if you want to fast track your growth and avoid a ton of mistakes that new growers make, it just makes sense to work with an expert in the field. And this isn't some sort of plug for the work I do with consulting and coaching for farms, as I think it's extremely beneficial to work with any coach in microgreens, whether it's Donnie Greens, Laura Patterson, or David Bouchard from Micro Acres. Having a coach will save you a significant amount of time and money trying to figure it out all on your own. I wish I had a coach I could pay in the early years. It would have saved me literally hundreds of thousands of dollars of mistakes I made over the last 10 years. But luckily for you, there are migrants coaches and programs to join. And I highly recommend taking advantage of these opportunities. If you can reframe your mindset and think of having a coach as an investment, which it really is, then logically, if you can, let's say, spend $1,000 today on coaching, and that helps your business increase profit by $5,000 this year, and then each year going forward, just in the first year, that's a 5x return on your investment. Try finding those kind of 5x returns in the stock market. It's, it's very rare. Uh, you'll, you'll hear once in a while about someone making like a ton of money on Bitcoin or something like that, but you have to time it right. With education, timing is much less important. It's just the fact that you do it and then you have this new level of information that you can use in your business. So investing in education is really an investment in yourself. And these investments have insane returns compared to putting that money into real estate, the stock market, Bitcoin, etc. And the last mistake to avoid when starting a microgreens farm is growing too much product before having customers. So the goal of growing microgreens before starting to sell them is that you get practice growing. So it's really important that you feel comfortable and confident when selling your microgreens. Having a few successful grows under your belt can make the world a difference in how you sell your nutritious, delicious microgreens. This is a really important point. The more you believe in your product you're selling, the more your customers will want to buy it and it will feel and be more natural for you as well. However, you don't wanna grow a ton of product that you have no customers for. It's good to use practice grows to give away free samples of your microgreens. It's hard for people to say no to delicious, nutrient-dense superfoods for free. This simple strategy works wonders and will start getting you paying customers quickly. I really wish I used this when I started out. My business would have taken off much faster. So you wanna use something called the grow to order model, meaning that customers place an order, then you grow it, and then you deliver it to the customer. And this avoids a huge issue of waste product and keeps your farm profitable and much easier to manage production. I've seen farms that don't use the grow to order model and they're either much less profitable or it's a lot more of a headache to run a business. And again, it's important that the business works for you. So having a grow to order model means that you don't have to worry about like having all this extra product, what are you going to do with it? It's, it's, it can be very stressful to deal with all this extra product every week. So having a grow to order model just makes it super, super simple. So I hope this helps you guys avoid some of the very costly and timely mistakes I made when starting my microgreens farm. Let me know in the comments below what's stopping you from starting your own microgreens farm from home. And if you're running a farm right now, what do you think is the top mistake you made when starting out?